Rafi, you are, you are muted. Good evening, everyone. Um, I, Rafi Ibrahim, lecturer in the Department of Economics and Social Sciences at Bragg University. Welcome you all to the launch and training of Bragg University and University of Kent collaboration. The event is streaming live on Bragg University's official Facebook page. Today we are delighted to have with us the Honorable UK High Commissioner to Bangladesh, His Excellency Robert Chatterton Dixon, Professor Bishwajit Chanda, Member of the University Grants Commission, Dr. Vincent Chang, Vice Chancellor of Bragg University, and Dr. Anthony Manning, Director and Dean of Global and Life Online, the University of Kent. We also have Professor Pizana Munshi, Dr. Dave Dunal, Professor Samia Hoff, Dr. Andrew Lano, and Dr. Zaki Lohasi Welcome. Without any further ado, I would now like to invite Professor Prasada Mutshi, Chairperson, Department of Economics and Social Sciences, Bragg University, to share her welcome remarks with us. Prasada Mutshi joined Bragg in 2019 as an assistant professor, and before joining USS, she taught at Queen's University, Belfast. She completed her PhD in economics from the University of Gothenburg and her current research is with the University of Birmingham and Harriet Welch University on fast-track vaccine cold assessment and design for mass-scale COVID-19 vaccination in Bangladesh, which have been funded by UKR. Professor Muchi was the first person who initiated and led this collaboration with the University of Kent from Bradford University. And we thank her on behalf of the department and the university at large. Over to you, Professor Muchi. Thank you, Rafi. Distinguished participants, esteemed colleagues, and my dear students. On behalf of the Department of Economics and Social Sciences, I welcome you all to the launching event of Bragg University, University of Kent, academic collaboration. I'm personally very excited about this collaboration because this will allow exchange of students both ways between these two universities and will open up possibilities for future academic and research collaboration. My Kent colleagues, Dr. Andre Lenov and Dr. Zaki Wahaz will reflect on this joint program further. Let me take this opportunity to add a few words about our department. ESS began its journey back in 2003. We offer BSS in economics and BSS in anthropology and masters in applied economics. Currently, we have nearly 800 students and an alumni body of over 400 graduates, demonstrating their abilities in different areas of academia, research, government sector, MNCs, international organization, banking, entrepreneurship, and not least in filmmaking. 
Very recently, two of our master's students won the prestigious Cambridge, Cambridge University Debate Tournament 2021. They are the first ever Bangladeshi team to win the title. Every year, 10 to 15 of our economics graduates go abroad for higher studies to universities of North America, Europe, and Australia. In the recent years, UK universities became very popular destination for higher studies for our economics graduates. High quality education is certainly the most important factor, but there are other factors as well. We have century old history and ties with the UK, so it's relatively easy for the students to convince their parents as many as families and friends living there. UK government support is an important factor. Most of our students avail scholarships. The student visa procedure is simple, uh, simpler and efficient. Also there are job opportunities after graduation. Last but not least, our graduates through their merit and hard work complete degrees with distinction from UK universities, which already created a good reputation for Brack University. We are living in an interconnected world. Fourth Industrial Revolution is rapidly changing the employment pattern around the world. These changes demand some essential skills from graduates, as we know, creativity, complex problem solving, critical thinking, emotional intelligence, people management, negotiation, etc. We at Brack University, with our up-to-date curriculum, well-trained faculties, extracurricular activities, and internationalization assist our students to attain those skills. I would like to thank our Vice Chancellor, Professor Vincent Chang, for encouraging internationalization, particularly this partnership. With his dynamic leadership, many of our departments and programs have worked on international collaboration. Our department is looking forward to more international collaboration. With Kent, we are continuing discussions with undergrad student exchange program and research collaboration. Also, we are having initial discussions with Bristol University, Monash University, University of Birmingham, University of Gothenburg, and University of San Francisco for academic collaboration. I hope to share some good news in some, some of these cases soon. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us once again, particularly His Excellency Robert Chatterton Dixon, Professor Bishadi Chanda, Dr. Robert Manning, my beloved ESS colleagues, our communication team for organizing this event so efficiently, international offices of Brack University and University of Kent for their continuous support and Kent colleagues, particularly Dr. Zaki Wahaz. Zaki and I worked on this idea for like more than two years. And finally, we are here to celebrate this partnership. I'll stop here. Thank you all. Over to you, Rafael. Thank you, Professor Mushi. Now I would like to welcome our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Vincent Chang, an international industrialist and academic. Professor Chang has held several, several leading positions in higher education, including the role of inaugural dean of Perkins University HSBC Business School. His academic background is in economics, electrical engineering, and computer science, and he has a PhD from Massachusetts Institute of Technology and the University of California, Edmonton. Uh, I would like to ask Professor Chan to please share some few words with us. Hi, Commissioner Robert, Professor Chanda, Professor Manning, guests and colleagues, good evening and good afternoon. I'm very excited about this degree uh, uh, curriculum collaboration with the University of Kent. This is a very important component of Bragg University's internationalization profile. I believe such a collaboration is first of its kind in Bangladesh. If I may, <clears throat> I would like to summarize in one sentence what Bragg University is going to become. That is to be on the map of global higher education by the end of this, by the end of this decade. To get there, Internationalization of the university is certainly the key step. Internationalization, in fact, 
is one of the most important pillar, if not the most important for Black University going forward. One is internationalization of a higher education institution, institution, particularly from emerging market perspective. Simply put, it's about people. It's about diverse students and faculty, both international and domestic. It's about network to tackle some of the world's biggest challenges, such as sustainability and civil society. Our universities simply cannot do it alone. We must be part of global networks, many, many of them. It's all about standard. It's about curriculum, about research and publication. And it's about international accreditation. How good are we is not based on what we think we are domestically is really based on acceptable international standards. It's also about management as well. It's about professionalism, outcome-driven, outcome-based, and meritocracy. And we have been making some progress on quite many fronts. We are broadening our student intake base. For example, in the last year, we have added about 200 additional international students from more than 20 countries, and we will have more. We are getting the most qualified faculty and senior academic leadership through global search. The key word is global search. We are expanding our international network. We are part of many, many significant networks such as Open Society, Tawa, and Global Business School, et cetera. We are pursuing international standards through international accreditation. Our business school is working toward basically two accreditation, two very, very renowned accreditation. One is AACSB, the other one is EFMD, American European, which overall in the world, there are less than 5% of business school get accredited. And we are making good progress uh, and they are within our reach. Our engineering program are also working toward uh, accreditation board for engineering and technology, America. Many of this that I just mentioned are all first of its kind in Bangladesh. And now this, another first in the country. This degree and curriculum collaboration with the University of Kent, this is real beef because degree and curriculum are the core of the university. In addition, we have also been working with other universities as well in the US, UK, and Australia. And very soon with the university in China as well. I think if there is something we can learn from China, that is its higher education ambition. I used to manage a new business school in China. I started from scratch, from zero, from nothing. Within eight years, we got 20% international student among the entire student body, we got 40% of highly qualified international faculty. And we produce significant output, research output. And the school received prestigious international accreditation. As a matter of fact, we even set up an overseas campus in UK, to be exact, in Oxford. So I envision Bragg University to take a similar trajectory. Not, not too long ago, after I arrived in Dhaka, in a day in mid-July 2019, I had a meeting with the founder of Black University, Sir Fazli Hassan Abe. On that particular day, we talked about the importance of internationalization and its implementation. At the end of the meeting, Sir Fazli Abe told me, Vice Chancellor, do whatever you need to do. You got eight years. And I replied, <clears throat> I said, it's, co it's coincidentally that 50 years ago this week, the week of mid-July 2019, when I spoke to him, man landed on the moon. It took NASA eight years to get to the moon. But if we do this right, if we are fully committed to internationalization, to land Bragg University on the map of a global, global higher education, we don't take we don't need eight years. And I still believe we don't need eight years. And this degree and, curr and curriculum collaboration with the University of Kent, I believe will be an important component that leads us 
to our landing of global map of higher education. And I hope too that this collaboration may serve as the beginning of any inspiration or ambition that Bangladesh higher education may wish to have. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Chen, for your wonderful speech. Um, may I now introduce Dr. Anthony Manning, the Director and Dean for Global and Lifelong Learning at the University of Kim. Dr. Manning is a committed higher education leader and an advocate for internationalization, who previously won a UK national teaching fellowship. I will now invite Dr. Manning to introduce the University of Kent to us. Professor Manning, over to you. Hello, everybody. Wonderful to be here today. Thank you for, for having us. Um, my name is Dr. Anthony Manning. I'm the Dean for Global and Lifelong Learning at the University of Kent, and I'm responsible for the full range of our internationalization activity and the development of new forms of inclusive education, such as degree apprenticeships and professional practice degrees and online learning. We're really delighted to be here with you today to mark formally the launch of the partnership between Brack University and the University of Kent. And the agreement between our two institutions is really the outcome of recognizing the potential of our academic strengths. And that's bringing those two areas together really combines for a much greater whole than working individually. And that's for the benefits of our students and the impact that they will make as graduates. What we see in this partnership with Brack is a coming together of really complementary expertise. The opportunity to be co-supervised by two leading institutions in the field of development economics is one that we're really proud to be able to offer students. Students who in their future careers will have such solid foundations to make a positive difference. For Kent, internationalisation is at the heart of our ethos and Brack, I know, also shares those values. Our global student community, our international staff, our exchange and collaborative education opportunities, our double degrees, our worldwide alumni networks, our ex extensive and well-rooted research links, all testimony to what we see as the essence of our institution, working together in partnership with universities like Brack. So a few more words about the University of Kent. So, Kent was established in 1965 with its main campus in Canterbury, which is situated in the beautiful county of Kent, often referred to as the Garden of England. Our second largest campus is located in Medway, closer to London. Um, and um, in, then in Canterbury, um, the campus is parkland setting, whilst Medway really enjoys the vibrancy of um, the creative setting of a former dockyard. So they're very, different campuses with um, you know, different areas of, of expertise and, and provision, both kind of, again, complementing each other and together forming the signature for our provision. We're a comprehensive university formed of six divisions, as you can see on the screen, offering undergraduate and postgraduate courses, including PhD, including arts and humanities, computing, engineering, mathematical sciences, human and social sciences. We have our Kent Business School, natural sciences, and the Division for Study of Law, Society, and Social Justice. And in 2020, we're proud to say we opened the Kent and Medway Medical School, the first for the region. So, when we come to research, enhancing our global research profile is an imperative for Kent. And I know this is a shared ambition with, with BRAC, as we've just heard. This is what provides the vibrancy and strength of our teaching and environment for students. We've recently introduced signature research themes, migration and movement, future human and environment, food systems and natural resources, intended to focus on our research activity through contemporary global challenges. These are cross-cutting themes involving research across our ins institution and in a range of different disciplines. Our School of Economics is at the forefront of many of these projects in this area, including the field of development economics that we're focused on today. Indeed, our School of Economics has a really long-standing reputation 
for world leading research and is ranked in the top 20 places to study economics for 2022. The school moved into brand new purpose built premises in 2019. The Kennedy Building, as pictured here, has been shortlisted for a Royal Institute of British Architects Award this year, and students can enjoy amazing purpose built facilities. I'll let my colleagues from economics speak about the development economics programme, but I just wanted to reiterate how proud we are to be um, working in collaboration with BRAC to support such an exciting new dimension to our academic offer. This is our first agreement of this nature with Bangladesh, and we are really looking forward to supporting its growth and development. So we're exploring how we can support the collaboration through the Turing Scheme, through UK government's Outward Mobility Funding Programme, and the range of international scholarships offered by the university. So we're really taking this seriously and integrating it into our provision and making sure it gets the focus that it needs. Thank you for this time to speak with you and to the British High Commissioner, the UGC and the British Council for their support as we develop our partnership in Bangladesh. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Professor Mann, for such a wonderful introduction. I'm sure we all have, like, the audience have enjoyed it a lot. So now I would like to invite Dr. Uh, Andrew Lamy and Dr. Zaki Bahas from the School of Economics, Kent University. Professor uh, Dr. Uh, Andrew Lamy is a senior lecturer and at the School of Economics, Kent University, and Professor uh, Zaki is also a lecturer in development economics, currently working as a reader at the University of Kent. Now, I would like to request Dr. Lan and Dr. Zaki to kindly shed some light on this new partnership and collaboration between two universities. Thank you, Rafiel. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Andre Lounov, and I'm a director of graduate studies at the School of Economics at the University of Kent. As a director of graduate studies, I'm in charge of all MSc level programs offered by our school. It is my pleasure to speak today at this launch event and celebrate the start of the exciting partnership between our universities and, of course, between our schools. The School of Economics has outstanding expertise in research and teaching, which is duly reflected in the most recent rankings, as already mentioned by Anthony just a minute before. Our school's academic staff is active in all major areas of contemporary economic research, and obviously they publish their academic worlds, their works in the world leading scientific journals. Significant academic achievements of the School of Economics were also recognized through establishment of three research centers, which we are very proud of. These are macro, the Center for Macroeconomics Growth and History, then the Research Center for European Agri and Environmental Studies, and the Development Economics Research Center, which is the most recent in this constellation, and I'm sure Zaki has much more to tell about it. Uh, from the perspective of postgraduate teaching, we offer a suite of MSc programs that cover all key dimensions of contemporary economics practice. These include the classical all-round MSc in economics, then a more data and practice orientated MSc in economics and econometrics, the specialized money and finance aspects MSc in financial economics, and of course, of course, which is very important for this event, the MSc in development economics, which will now be co-delivered with the School of Humanities and Social Sciences at the Brack University. My introduction of the School of Economics, of course, would be very incomplete if I would not mention an excellent uh, student support that we provide. We provide top-notch service to facilitate all aspects of students' lives, such as all-round learning and academic advisory service, comprehensive student experience and well-being service, employability, future career training and support, and finally support through the representation of the student union. Once again, I'm very, very happy to be part of today's event. And at the School of Economics, we see the present launch as the first step towards a wider collaboration that can potentially embrace other postgraduate programs and expand to further joint teaching and research activities. We are very much looking forward to walking this path together. Thank you and over to Zaki. Thank you, Dr. Lamy. Now I would 
um, information is quite interesting. Now we are going to have a um, member of the University Transformation, Professor Vishwajit Chandra, with us today in New Zealand. A professor of law, he was the founding chairman of the Department of Law and Land Administration at the University of Rajshahi, Bangladesh. Professor Vishwajit has also served as a member of Bangladesh Judicial Service Commission, and he has strong links to the UK higher education sector, and is a PhD graduate of the School of Oriental and African Studies. May I now invite Professor Vishwati Chandra to share his reflection on this partnership and the value of internationalization in higher education in Bangladesh. Thank you very much, Rafael. His Excellency Robert uh, Chatterton Dixon, the High Commissioner to Bangladesh, Professor Vincent Sang, Vice Chancellor Brack University, Dr. Uh, Anthony Manning, Dr. Andrew Lernov, and Dr. Jackie Oz from the University of Kent, Professor Samia Hawk and Professor Farzana Munshi Brack University, Dr. Dave Dowland, Registrar Brack University, distinguished, distinguished guests teachers, representatives, and officials from both universities, you know, Black University and the University of Kent. A very good evening and uh, good afternoon to our UK counterparts. If I focus on the uh, importance of internationalization of higher education, uh, I would say successful inter internationalization of higher education institutions is determined by three major aspects we know. Students in engagement, I mean the education and preparation of students in international context. Uh, faculty members, number two, faculty members competence and engagement, which means uh, international engagement of faculty members in teaching and research. And number three, international institutional commitment for internationalization. Uh, that means campus leaders institutional com commitment for internationalization of higher education. Autonomy and quality initiatives can ensure internationalization of higher education institutions. Uh, including students. I believe Brack University enjoys SAS autonomy, and that's why they have been able to establish uh, such types of uh, collaborations with uh, university, universities from different countries. We understand that successful internationalization of higher education institutions will ultimately bring positive changes in our higher education institutions. And uh, it will also solve the problems pertaining to enhancement of academic innovation, institutional capacity, project management support, quality of teaching, quality of research environment, uh, regulating branch campuses of foreign universities, and uh, all quality aspects of higher education institutions. Uh, we think more emphasis should be given to organizational capabilities, such as the ability to align the school staff with the goal of the organization. A special training must be designed for the academic leaders, especially more emphasis should be given to instilling the strategic leadership practices. In addition, understanding better organizational practices, bureaucracy, quality practices, and initiatives could be a positive intervention for successful internationalization of learners. Uh, and their, I mean, uh, outcome. Academic, and it is also, uh, important for academicians' engagement and international institutional promises. While 
leadership requires competency, which can be achieved through learning from training and learning from experience. Academic leaders should work with continual professional development. Uh, there is a such a unit uh, at Dhaka University. I know uh, maybe it's called. Uh, um, I mean, at other universities, it is called Center for uh, Center of Excellence for. Uh, it is called CTL Center of Excellence in Teaching and Learning, and uh, Dhaka University has got such a unit as well, CPD unit. And uh, uh, I mean, in addition, academic leaders must learn from the previous experience, daily activities and relationships with other stakeholders. As in reality, the influence of globalization on education system of Bangladesh is undeniable. And therefore it is important to implement internationalization of higher education institutions. Internationalization activities diversify the academic programs, practices, culture, and innovation, resulting to prepare a group of better and competent students for a globalized world. Furthermore, internationalization contributes in increasing higher education institutions' revenue in times of crisis, and it also decreases uh, the available budgets for higher education. In these points of views, internationalization will ultimately bring positive changes in higher education institutions and solve the problems pertaining to enhancement of academic innovation, institutional capacity, project management support, quality of teaching, quality of research environment, regulating grants, campuses of foreign universities and all quality aspects of higher education institutions. If I talk about the cross-border higher education initiatives from the part of Bangladesh or uh, from the part of uh, UGC or University Grants Commission of Bangladesh, I would like to mention that, I am happy to mention that we, the University Grants Commission of Bangladesh and the government of Bangladesh are happy to welcome reputed foreign universities uh, to establish their branch campuses in Bangladesh. And uh, as I studied uh, in the UK, I will always be happy to welcome any reputed uh, UK or British university uh, in Bangladesh. I am informed or I know that Drake University has increasing numbers of international academic partnerships and inter international students drawn from uh, some 22 countries. This university is the only higher education institution in South Asia with membership of Open Society University Network, the 1 billion international higher education network founded by George Soros. The network is a basis for uh, worldwide exchange of good practice and educational development opportunities. This university, Black University and Black, the Black NGO have many a strong link with the UK, United Kingdom. The founder, the late, uh, I mean, the founder of Black, the late Sir Fazli Hassan Abed was honored to receive the KCMG uh, from the Prince of Wales and Brack maintains a London office. I mean, uh, Brack, uh, the members of Brack University, uh, they know this, and I am mentioning this uh, to inform the uh, counterpart from the, I mean, uh, UK counterpart. This university, uh, is working with the University of Birmingham, as it has been mentioned already, and other institutions on fast track vaccine cold chain assessment and uh, design for mass scale COVID 19 vaccination is in Bangladesh. And this has been funded by Newton 
a Global Challenge Research Fund, and uh, they are involved. Brock University is involved in many other research projects. Uh, I mean, joint research, uh, they are conducting these uh, projects, researches jointly with uh, other countries, including uh, the universities from the UK, with the universities from the UK. I am proud to mention that uh, a Brock University team of Applied Economics Masters students has recently won the 2021 Cambridge University Championship, uh, Championship deb uh, debating title. It is the first ever Bangladeshi team which has won the international competition organized by the Cambridge Union. There are many other uh, successes uh, which I uh, could have mentioned, but uh, I mean, uh, most of the audience, you know this, and uh, for today, uh, that is enough, uh, I think. Finally, I congratulate Brack University and its authorities, as well as the uh, University of Kent, on their new journey together, which will certainly help the students, faculties, researchers, and especially Bangladeshi higher education institutions achieve the goals of internationalization of higher education. I thank Brack University for inviting me. I wish you all a great success in this venture. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Bishwaji. Now I would like to invite Dr. Azaki Bahas from the University of Kent to speak about this international collaboration between two universities. And Professor uh, Dr. Zaki, can you please start your presentation? Thank you, Rafi. Hello, everyone. My name is Zaki Wahad. I'm a reader in economics at the University of Kent and co-director of the Development Economics Research Center at Kent. It's a pleasure to be here today to celebrate this exciting collaboration between Brack University and the University of Kent. I will give you a brief overview of the MSc Development Economics Program, which under this collaboration will be co-delivered by our two universities. But I'll start by saying a few words about research and supervision in the area of development economics more generally at Kent. Um, so the Development Economics Research Center at Kent, or Derek, is the newest research center within the School of Economics established in 2020. It comprises of 14 academics with expertise on a wide range of topics related to economic development, uh, as well as um, different research methods and geographical regions. In particular, we have a concentration of expertise and research interests in South Asia, with ongoing or recently completed research projects in Bangladesh, as well as in India, Nepal, and Pakistan. We are also involved in teaching and providing research supervision in development economics at the undergraduate, masters, and PhD levels. Within this portfolio, the MSc program in development economics is one that we're particularly proud of. The new collaboration with Brack University will give students the opportunity to take advantage of unique expertise and resources available at both institutions. They will spend the autumn and spring term receiving rigorous training in core economics modules, as well as exposure to seminal work in development economics and the latest research and methods in this area. Then they will have the opportunity to spend the summer at Brack University to work on their dissertation, making use of research data from Bangladesh, engaging with experts within the BRAC family, jointly supervised by a Kent academic, the BRAC University academic. We believe this co-delivery arrangement will provide a unique and exciting opportunity, not only for UK students, but also for students from Bangladesh and other countries interested in postgraduate studies in economics and development. And so I'm very much looking forward to this collaboration. Thank you very much.
So back to you, Rahim. Have you lost the host? I think we probably lost the host. <laughs> I understand okay. that, yes, I understand there's a small internet problem, but um, it's a pleasure for me instead to um, welcome um, His Excellency, the UK High Commissioner, Robert Chatterton Dixon, who has visited Brack University on a number of occasions. Um, he's been High Commissioner um, to Bangladesh since 2019, having held a number of senior diplomatic appointments, appointments in the cabinet office and previous positions in the city of London. And um, um, High Commissioner, please um, um, speak to everyone attending this program. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Well, <clears throat> thank you very much for, for inviting me to participate. And it's very good to join uh, the University Grants Commission and distinguished members of the team at Bracken at the University of Kent. Uh, and I'd just say very briefly how much I echo what everyone else has said about uh, the extraordinary value of this uh, collaboration. Uh, I think it's very clear when you look at the achievement of Bangladesh over the last 50 years uh, in extraordinary social and economic progress, uh, which is about to be rewarded with graduation from LDC status. When you look ahead at the next phase of Bangladeshi development, then human capital is going to be the absolute key to that. Uh, the ability of Bangladesh to uh, generate and employ people with the right skills to keep uh, an increasingly sophisticated uh, and globally connected economy uh, moving ahead. And development economics are going to be crucial to that. So I think it's great that uh, we now have an opportunity for the University of Kent and the very uh, well-renowned work there and the equally renowned work uh, of Brack University uh, to be combined together uh, to address the challenges and, and uh, the opportunities uh, that lie ahead for Bangladesh. Uh, I think it's particularly good that this is a two-way street uh, with this collaboration. I think it's brilliant that students will be able to spend time at the University of Kent, but also that students from the University of Kent will be able to spend time in Bangladesh, because I think there's an enormous amount uh, that can be learned from Bangladesh's development journey and the wider way that uh, life is lived in Bangladesh. And I think it's fantastic that students will have the opportunity uh, to spend time in Bangladesh uh, in one of the great uh, educational institutions uh, here, uh, Brack University. Uh, and I hope more generally, coming back to a point that we were discussing before the presentation, that this will be just uh, the first uh, or an early harbinger uh, of wider collaboration. I was very pleased to hear uh, Professor Biswak Chanda of the UGC say that he would welcome uh, branch campuses from UK universities, because I think um, this sort of collaboration uh, can be enormously valuable to all sides uh, in Bangladesh uh, in enabling Bangladesh to develop the human capital that it needs. So uh, we've been talking to the education minister about this. Uh, I've had these conversations on many occasions since I arrived in Bangladesh. Uh, I know the UGC has had some, some concerns uh, about how we implement the Cross-Border Higher Education Act to the mutual benefit of Bangladesh and the UK. And I'm very uh, keep pleased to hear this evening, uh, Professor Chanda, uh, give this his endorsement. So we will definitely be following up with that. Um, but thank you very much for having me. Uh, I don't know whether there's a sort of launch moment. I don't think I can break a bottle over the bows of the, uh, the new course, uh, but I'm delighted to see it taking place. Uh, I think it's a tribute to both sides that you are, are doing it in the way that you're doing it. And as High Commissioner, I'm very pleased to see this, both this specific example of collaboration, but also this uh, opportunity for wider collaboration in the future. So thank you very much for having me here this evening and best of luck with the uh, implementation of the course. Thank you. Well, thank you, High Commissioner, for launching the scheme. Thank you. And at this point, it's a pleasure to introduce Professor Samia Huck, anthropologist, 
Dean of General Education. Um, she has a PhD from Brandeis University and close links to Georgetown University. Thank you very much. Please go ahead, um, Dr. Huck. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dallin. Um, His Excellency um, Robert Chatterton Dixon, Vice, uh, Vice Chancellor Vincent Chang, uh, Professor, um, our colleagues from University of Kent, Professor Bishwajit Chanda from the University Grants Commission, and colleagues from and students from Brack University, our registrar uh, Dave Dowlin. Very, very good evening. Um, it's wonderful to be here and to see this partnership launch today. I was privy to some of the initial conversation as they were developing um, a little over two years ago um, when I was interim dean of uh, humanities and social sciences. And I saw my dear colleague, uh, Professor Farzana Munshi, so enthusiastic and so um, determined to get this off the ground. So it is indeed a, a pleasure to see this coming together and launching today. Um, so when, when I was initially privy to this conversation uh, over two years ago, that was also the time that uh, Professor Vincent Chang had arrived and he was, um, you know, we were sort of in, in the process of uh, doing or, or reiterating uh, BRAC University's vision mission, BRAC U 2.0, as we call it. And internationalization was going to be a, a core pillar of that process and of that project. And um, of course, we see now, you know, uh, amidst pandemic uh, notwithstanding, that indeed um, that was uh, very forward looking and thinking on the part of our vice chancellor, because that is indeed the way forward for a variety of reasons that have already been mentioned uh, by the speakers before me. Um, we at Brack University, of course, embrace this for the obvious reasons that that is the way forward. Um, that Bangladesh, as it graduates out of its uh, LDC status, uh, will require uh, a certain human uh, development in human capital to harness uh, the growth and the new position that we hope to arrive at. And in that, we also think that this is the time to think about um, teaching and learning, uh, innovations in pedagogy, creating research environments, and all of this, uh, you know, having uh, or establishing roots through partnerships. So of all kinds, of international, of local, of lateral, of regional. And I think it's, it's wonderful to be at this moment where we're looking at many such possibilities, this one being prime amongst them. Uh, we're also looking at, uh, we're at a moment where we need higher education to go from what it was to, to be truly transformative. And this, uh, when I say transformative education at Brack University, I echo actually the ethos of our founder, Sir Fazve Hassan Abed, whose vision for the world is, was indeed transformative. And if we uh, take from that ethos, if we borrow from that ethos, to think about what we're doing at, at the university that he also founded. Indeed, the mission should be one that is transformative, that is modern, that is global, that is globally connected, globally thinking, and locally acting. I think that's the kind of students and citizen subjects that we hope to be, we aim to be producing. And of course, uh, I don't think I'm the right person to be stating the importance of economics. I think it's already been stated um, that indeed it will be economics along with the social sciences will be a key area in which that kind of energy will have to go in in order to harness the growth and in order, to, uh, in order for Bangladesh to live up to its potential. 
So with that, I would like to thank uh, everyone again, um, a special nod to my colleague, Professor Farzana Munshi again, um, and her uh, partner at, uh, at Kent, uh, Professor Zaki Wahaj, Dr. Zaki Wahaj, whom I've actually had the privilege of working with in the past as well. So it's wonderful to see Zaki, um, you coming to BRACU again in this new form and through new channels and possibilities of doing, um, of continuing to do good work. So congratulations to everybody and uh, uh, felicitations and uh, wishing everybody all the best for the implementation of the course. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Samia. With that, we have almost reached the end of this show. I would now call our sir, Dr. Dave Donald, for his concluding remarks. Dr. Donald is a graduate of Oxford and King's College London. He served as a registrar and in other senior positions in the UK higher education sector before coming to Bangladesh. He was also awarded an honorary fellowship of Trinity Laban Conservatory of Music and Dance in London in recognition of his outstanding service as a teacher. I would now like to call Dr. Donald to have his concluding remarks. Well, thank you, Raphael. Honored guests and colleagues and everyone attending this program, it's a pleasure to sum up the messages from this event. Here at Brack University, we benefit from many international collaborative partnerships but we particularly wanted to celebrate or highlight this one with the University of Kent. This new relationship, as you've heard, creates opportunities for two-way exchange between the countries and potential for further development in teaching and research with Kent. We look forward to welcoming students to Bangladesh and they will have the rich resources of the BRAC movement, which links us to every part of Bangladesh, as well as to other countries in Asia, Africa, Central America and beyond. BRAC University has had global connections ever since it was founded by perhaps the most famous social worker in the world, Sir Fazli Hassan Abed. The university is a promising resource to link the worlds of international development and higher education in the interests of social and economic construction. Yesterday, the Honorable um, Foreign Minister of Bangladesh was here for a program on advancing peace through sustainable development and social well being, co hosted by the Brack Center for Peace and Justice the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and United Nations Women. And just last weekend, the first year students gathered to reflect on what it means to be part of a vast, diverse, cross-cultural learning community. Brack University is emerging from the pandemic with larger student numbers and also looking forward to an impending move to a new campus which will be one of the notable buildings of Bangladesh, well-designed and environmentally sustainable. It will increase the opportunities for the university to act as a hub for international education and cultural exchange, and as a resource for the mega city of Taka and beyond, as we make connections across the higher education sector in the South Asian region. Very many thanks to Kent colleagues, including Primrose Paskins and Hannah McNaughton, for the pleasure of working with you on the planning of this collaboration. We thank all our honoured speakers and guests for joining us in this celebration. We have greatly appreciated the presence of the UK High Commissioner, of Professor Bishwat Chanda from UGC, our colleagues in Kent, and everyone who has joined this program. And now I hand back to our moderator. Thank you very much and good evening.
Thank you, Dr. Dono, for your speech. This brings us to the end of this event, and I sincerely appreciate all of your presence and participation in this event. If anyone has any further question regarding the master's program and the collaboration, you can reach out to us via email, or you can also send us messages on our Facebook page. Wish you all have a wonderful day ahead. Goodbye and take care. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you very much.